Your lecture is Joel Sartori. Mr. Sartori is a National Geographic photographer, a speaker, an author, and a regular contributor to National Geographic magazine. He is also the founder of the Photo Arc, a 20-year project to document every captive species on Earth. Mr. Sartori has published several books including Photo Arc and Rare, Portraits of America's Endangered Species. He and his work have been the subject of numerous national broadcasts, including National Geographic's Explorer, NBC's Nightly News, and the PBS documentary At Close Range with National Geographic. Well, hi everybody, here we go again. Welcome to Fundamentals of Photography, part two. You're in my above ground lair here, high over the streets of Lincoln, Nebraska. This is actually my office. It's in an old converted uh, carriage house. It's cozy up here, did most of the work ourselves. Um, here's what this course is about. This course is about getting you from good to great. Seriously. I mean, the first course, we did a lot of basic, basic stuff like Here's how f-stops work, aperture. Here's how shutter speeds work. Here's how ISO works. This course, we will certainly be talking about these things. You can't do great photography without thinking about that sort of thing, but it's not a basic, basic review course. Uh, we do talk about the fundamentals. It is Fundamentals of Photography Part Two, but we're going outside. This is a workshop. You've taken a workshop or two in your lives, right? That's what this is. We're gonna go out in the field for everything, just about. And we're going to really literally talk about how we get from A to B to C, C being great, B being pretty good, A being beginner level. And I know we all, we all want to get to great. And so that's, that's what we're really trying to do. Do we get to great pictures with every situation we do out here? Well, sometimes, sometimes not. We're going to talk about the problems we encounter. This is problem solving first and foremost, isn't it? It's all problem solving. And we're going to talk about ways to fix those problems. We certainly have to have an artistic eye, but we have to be nimble and we have to really think about what we're doing. All the time we have to be thinking about light and background and interesting subject. I know I sound like a broken record, but them's the facts. That's what we really need to do. So right off the bat, where are we going? We're going to do problem solving. We're calling this, this lecture, Find the Picture. Uh, to me, the world's like a big scavenger hunt if I have a camera, camera around my neck. I'm looking for great stages and I'm looking for the players to appear. So we're, we're first going to go to a place uh, that I think is incredibly difficult to work even though it is amazingly beautiful. We're going to go there and we're going to go on a big picture hunt and try to find the picture by using our problem solving abilities and thinking about light, composition, and certainly something interesting. So let's go on outside. Hey, we are at the historic Woods Mansion in Lincoln, Nebraska. It is beautiful, beautiful place. There's a three-story pipe organ in there, believe it or not. I don't know that it works anymore, but we're here to go inside and try to find the picture. It's a very elaborate, ornate house. And at first view, you're like, holy cow. But then where do you really go to make the ultimate picture inside? Let's go in and find out. Wow, this is amazing. Ornate, even looks like they vacuumed for us. It's perfect, perfect. Well, it's perfect if you're having a party. Is it perfect for what we're doing? Not so much. You know, when we come in, it's a feast for the eyes. It's, it's, it's busy, but not cluttered in a way. Um, it's just lovely in every way. But look at the problems, look at the problems. I mean. We've got very uneven light with these, with these very bright reading lamps, chandeliers, what to do. You know what I would do? I think I would simplify this. I would simplify it because I'm gonna have to either light the whole room to beat down these reading lamps because it's an overcast day. I don't have very much light kicking in through the windows. I'm gonna do all this with this. 
No tripod, no nothing. I wanna shoot this as if I have no other gear other than a single camera and a single lens. So I know that because of the uneven lighting, I'm gonna kill these lights on all the, uh, on all the tables. And then I'm gonna look at it again. And I bet we're still gonna see problems. But the first thing I'm gonna do is simplify the scene. Let me shut these off. We've shut all the lights off in the room and it's really starting to reveal itself now in terms of where the, where the room feels like it wants to be photographed, if you will, at least to me. And it's gonna be around the edges, you know that. We're gonna use natural light. It's a cloudy day, but there's plenty of light coming in because this is a historic home, the Woods Mansion. And we have lots of big, beautiful windows and doors that are letting light in. If you look at the center of the room, boy, it's a big black hole in a way for light. It's lovely, but it is really not, it's not where I wanna work. It's just, it's just kind of muddy. It's dark and muddy. If we come over here, this piano, I'm drawn to it immediately. It's ornate and vintage and just incredible inlay in it. It's fantastic, but it's not incredible to photograph. We've got these big doors right here. We don't want to touch anything and move anything in this, in this instance. Big patio doors that if you squint, you can see those are going to be blown out and the piano is going to be in this dark corner. Then we've got this sunroom that's allowing a lot of light in too, but it, this is not the spot. This is not the spot. Okay, this is beautiful. I mean, it's, it's good enough to just get a picture without doing anything. Just a, a beautiful scene. Lovely. Lovely. Nice soft light outside allows us to really light the inside and the outside at about the same exposure level. Very, very nice. There's nothing wrong with it. It'd look better, I think, with a couple of models in here. Uh, but um, really lovely. Is this the picture? Is this the spot to, to tell the story of this house? I don't know. Maybe not. Got these big pillars. We'll bring a couple of models in here and we'll try to work this. We'll just try to see. So one other thing I noticed is, is going down the lane here, we've got an opportunity to use framing using doorways as a way of really doing a nice layered composition. This might be a really nice spot to do that. It's very beautiful. I mean, it just begs for it, really. And it shows the expanse of the house and the impressiveness of this house. This is one of the finest homes in the state of Nebraska, not just in Lincoln. There's one other spot over here we should talk about. Um, there's a lot of light right here. And this may be where we end up. We've got this lovely, lovely scene. We see the entire room. We see archways back there. And the light is really good right here. I mean, really good. This area where we could put a couple of family members is a lot brighter than the rest of the room, but the room still will show up. I bet you this is where we're going to end up if we're talking about finding the picture. So let's get started. Well, we're here in this, in this sunroom now uh, with our models, Shannon and Cole and Nick and Spencer. We practiced just a little bit. It's, it's very well lit. Let's just, let's just do like we just practiced and um, step on out. Here we go. Okay, let's see. Nick just kind of looked down towards Spencer a little bit. The, uh, I really like this scene. It's, it's, it's lovely. It's a cloudy day but it's still okay. And I'm going to run, I'm at F28, 2000 ISO. So I'm wide open, 2000 ISO. I'm at 640 for, for a shutter. Now I'm at 400. Now 250. Now 125. Really opened it up and made it look like a bright sunny day by slowing that shutter down. There's a lovely sunroom with a somber cast. All right. And it does show the room. And it does look lovely. But is it the picture that we want to show the opulence of this house? I'm not sure about that. I don't know. If I try to shoot back this way into the room, and if I were to put them in this brightly lit room, looking back the other direction to show the grand room here, I don't think so. Why? Because I've got these big arched columns blocking my view. I just don't, I'm not feeling it. There's a lot of weight and mass to this wall. I don't think so. I think we need to go back out into the main room and find a different spot. Even though there's, this is lovely, nothing wrong with it, I want to show the big room and I want to show the opulence here. I want to show the decorations. I want to show how big that room is. So let's go on out and we'll, we'll take a look on the other side of the room looking back. Okay, we moved out of that sunroom now and we're into the great room. 
But I'm telling you, I'm seeing something right off the side of the great room. I'm keeping my eyes open and seeing other possibilities. Maybe I shouldn't just focus on the great room. Maybe I should look at the fact that there's an opportunity here to use doorways as framing devices. That's a really good way to problem solve. The doorways basically give you a foundation or a good building block, a good starting point for a nice layered photograph. So we've got an overcast day. The sun's a little bit in and out, but mainly overcast. The house seems dark. But to a nice camera, it does not seem that dark. So I'm looking straight down the alley, virtually the length of the house. I've got one doorway with Spencer seated there. I've got a uh, patio door that's allowing light in on Cole. Shannon's back there kind of subdued. And Nick's all the way past the dining room in the small doorway in the back. He's illuminated as much by an, a tungsten light source, some sort of a ceiling lamp back there than anything. So the light's fairly even all the way through. And I think I can shoot a couple here and really say something about the size of the house and the opulence. Let's see here. And I shot a few other shots here as we were practicing getting ready. This might even be time for a vertical. I don't shoot verticals a whole lot, but this really calls for it. Spencer, look right here. Give me that finger thing you were doing earlier where you look like you're planning your next, uh, your great move. Let's see here, right here, buddy. Look right here at me. That's nice. Lots of, uh, lots of room here. Really expansive layer with Spencer in the front and this doorway, or this big, big, I don't even know if you call it a doorway. Then Cole's back there by the flowers, then Shannon, then the dining room, then Nick. Lots of room here. It speaks to an opulent house, it really does. But is this the picture? Well, it could be, certainly. And it's because I kept my mind open and looked around. I didn't just have blinders on to shoot this room. But I do want to problem solve this room after all. This is the room that we came in and saw. It's the great room. I really do want to try to get something really elegant out of this great room that frankly I've come over here socially to this house a few times over the years. I never have figured out how to beat it. I'm going to try to beat it today. So let's walk around the other side and see if the picture is there. So we have hunted all over the first floor of this house, and I gotta tell you, I think we may be onto something here. We've found a courting bench, which is actually an old uh, vintage piece of furniture in which the couple, dating couple, couldn't get too close. One sits forward, one sits back, but that's a nice, cute thing. A Little bit of color here, and the light, it's bright right by this window. Even though it's an overcast day, you'd never think it. The camera sees this as a bright spot in the frame, the brightest spot of the frame is right where our four characters are. The rest of the room is there, but it fades away to darkness. We're using the fact that the center of the room is very dark. We're using that to our advantage now. That becomes our background. With some brightness back there, the arches that were so difficult to defeat and got in the way in the sunroom picture, now those arches become our buddies and they give us some detail and they give us something bright and really graphic in terms of those round, tops and that holds the back of the scene together so are you guys ready are you excited nick we've got this one shoot of light even though this is a soft overcast day this one beam of light coming in so get really close into shannon shannon lean into cole there you go spencer i want you in there get on in get on in nice nick get in a little closer okay very nice okay now we are so excited because we found the picture finally you ready okay you ready, Spencer? Okay. One, two, three. Yay! We found the picture. Oh, I, you can do better than that. This is the type of banter photographers do to, you know, get their subjects warmed up. Okay, this one we're going to yell that we found the picture. Okay, you ready, guys? All right. One, two, three. Yay! We found the picture. Yay! All right. Excellent. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you guys, thanks very much. So there you go, finding the picture in a lovely home with uneven light, with nothing but this camera and a brain. That's it. You can do this too, wherever you want, provided you have permission. Well, that was kind of fun, wasn't it? An embarrassment of riches there, yet kind of hard to figure out, well, exactly where should we be? So many distractions. And we did get it. We got several nice pictures. Uh, you know, it's, it's not like we just got one, one payoff. I thought we got a couple, to be honest. It's, it's not scientific. It really isn't. It's, uh, it's very subjective. 
it's your artistic eye, and it's just whatever you're in the mood for, really. There's no right or wrong answer there. And if you guys had been in that house, it would have been a totally different shoot and probably better. Okay, so how about this? Let's now go to a place that is, let's say Spartan at best. The cupboard is bare, no choices at all, really. Or is it a blank canvas for us to fill however we want? I think it's how you, how you look at it. So let's head on outside and let's go to a place where we have minimal distractions and we're gonna find the picture there. Well, now I'm out at an old abandoned farmhouse near Bennett, Nebraska. Very Spartan here, not a whole lot going on. Let's go inside and look around and see if we can find a picture or two. Doesn't look bad. That looks pretty good. So so, maybe. In the kitchen. I don't think so. Let's go upstairs. See. That is a weird staircase. And that is a cool tub. Light's not great. Well, it's simple. I think it pictures downstairs though. I really do. Let's go try that. All right, so the shot's either here or right here. We'll try them both. Well, I've walked around the outside of the old farmhouse and middle of the day, the light's pretty harsh. Not seeing much, but usually inside an old farmhouse, they've got a lot of windows and a lot of natural light. Even in an old abandoned place, the light's still really good in here. We have Erica right here and she's agreed to, to, to model for me. She's wearing a very bright red dress. That's the most vibrant color I can possibly imagine in this otherwise fairly bland scene. We've got, we've got a little stuff going on, but this is a Spartan old house. Most of the stuff's been stripped out of it years ago. Just a few remnant things. So I'm gonna try getting a picture here and we'll just see, see how this looks. I'm at 2000 ISO and I'm wide open at 2 f2.8 with a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. And um, I've got a 320th of a second. And my exposure compensation dial is down three quarters of a stop. I just like shooting things rich just the same way I always shot slide film over the years. So I'm gonna just shoot here and you know, it's okay, she stands out all right, but I'm looking down and I love to look eye level at subjects if I can. So I'm gonna try just getting a little lower and um, let's see, is this any better? Well, maybe. Try sitting up just for a second. See more of your red, just one arm on the back of that. But I wanna see more red. See if that more red helps. You know, part of the problem with this is that the, um, the corner is dark. That's part of the problem is we don't really have any good light coming in. There's a little window light, a little window there, but it's heading towards afternoon and that's an east facing window. And I'm just, I'm not really seeing direction of light or anything. And the corner's kind of sparse. So I think we're going to keep, we're going to keep looking around in here till we find something that really, really works well. I've looked around the farmhouse some more. It's a pretty stark place. There's hardly anything in here left, but cliff swallows, barn swallows making nests. And I have found another spot that I think is much better for a couple of reasons. Let me tell you why. First of all, we've got Esther sitting here and, and I don't even need her in a red dress to make her stand out. I mean, it's kind of smart. Her skin color, the dress color, the chair color, the, the color of the wood floor. It's just, it's just all very neutral and subtle. And she fits. Look at this. She fits perfectly. The chair fits underneath this, this old sailfish that's been hanging here a long time. And everything's kind of, it's just kind of a soft palette of color. The light is very soft. She fits. It, the whole scene fits. It just works like who would have thunk it, of course. So I'm going to take a shot just like this. That's fine. Everything's the same exposure because it's back in the shadows. Middle of the day, harsh sun. We've got a nice window kicking light in off the floor. But I want to be eye level. I really do. So I'm going to get down a little lower. She still fits, that's fine. But Esther and I practiced this just a minute ago. Esther, go ahead and lean forward for me. 
Now look at this. This to me is remarkable because not only is this find the picture work because she fits in this scene, but when she leans forward, she is completely lit and she stands out now. She's brighter than the scene she's in. Just her face and her arms and the front of her shoulders is lit really, really well and not over the top. I'm not banging away with flash. This doesn't cost any money. It's simple use of window light. And the difference between her sitting back in that chair and her coming forward a yard is a mile. It is tremendously changing. The light is just fabulous this way. So, yeah, it's great, it's great. Now, could we do things different? Sure, we could play around with the scene. Maybe we could throw other light in here. Maybe we could warm up the scene, but I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't touch it. It's just natural light, middle of the day, next to a window. She sits forward and it totally completes the frame. It even looks good up here. So my camera is set up the same way as in the previous portrait in the corner with the girl in the red dress, set up the same way. I, my exposure compensation dial is, is down a little bit, but otherwise about the same. Instead of three quarters of a stop down, I'm one and 1.3 stops down. I wanted to make it a little darker because I really wanted her face to pop. But otherwise, I'm at 2000 ISO. I'm at aperture priority. I'm letting the, I'm letting the camera pick the shutter wide open on 2.8. Why don't I want the whole scene in focus? Well, I'm back far enough, most of it is, for all intents and purposes, but I really just want her face sharp. So that's how I've got it set up. And it's a different exposure now. It's a different shutter speed than over there because that was a dark corner. And when she pops forward, she's very, very lit. Let's see. That's 640 of a second, 640. Sit back, let's see if that shutter changes. About the same because it's looking at the whole scene and when her face is lit, that doesn't change the exposure. Try leaning forward one more time. Very nice. And now the, the other thing is the sun's gone behind a cloud, middle of the day, but, but is there a difference in those two types of light here? Well, yeah, a little bit. One is obviously the shutter speed's gonna slow down because the room gets darker and I'm telling it, hey camera, on aperture priority, I've picked the aperture, wide open. Camera, you're gonna pick the shutter. So the shutter slowed down as it's gotten darker outside with the cloud, but also the color of the light changes somewhat in that the room becomes more blue. Shady light has a blue hue, whereas bright direct sun is more white. A couple more things to think about there. You know, when I'm looking to find a picture, I'll often, I don't know, resort to doors and windows as a way of framing subjects. It's fun, it's easy. I mean, we see it all the time in the movies and magazines, and we're kind of used to seeing people framed in doorways and windows, so I do it too, I do it all the time. It's a nice way to get me started at least and really get me going. So out here at the old farmhouse, I first had Esther just kind of appear in the doorway because it's really dark behind her and that yellow dress pops out really well. So I photographed that first and I thought, okay, that works, that works fine. But look, there's a window straight across from her and it's one of those old fashioned tall skinny windows. So I put Erica in there, she's in a green dress. And I shot that, I thought, that's cool, that's cool, look at this. And I thought, well, there's a window right above Erica. Why not, why not put Ellen up there in a red dress and kind of get, you know, get a lot of color going on the side of this old house, which is very neutral and uh, in, its, in its color palette, kind of a beat up old white. And I thought, you know, we're missing something, aren't we? To balance this out, I really need somebody to form a, a, a fourth position up there on the roof. So my, my son Cole put on a jacket and tie and got up there on a ladder. Thanks, Cole. And uh, now we have it. Now we have it. We've got this house and it's dressed out and it's just it's ready to shoot. And that looks great. That looks just fine. And you know, even better, instead of showing the whole house, which is the tendency, because the, the sun is behind some clouds, but still brightly lit, this side of the house, I'm gonna come in. I don't need to, maybe I don't need to show the sky. Fact, I think it might be even better in, like this, tighter. That looks great. Very easy, very simple to do. Doesn't cost anything, just putting people in windows and doorways. Give it a try, it's all right. Okay kids, it's time for a critique. 
We're going to do that at the end of a few of these lessons. We're just going to go through and uh, our, do our find the picture thing right here using a program, just a basic photo editing program. Kind of talk through some of the basic situations I thought, you know, this could work, this could work. Let's just look at a few frames here where I started out with the, the plain sunroom, nothing else, and then I added a couple of models, intern Nick and Sun Spencer. I'm thinking, okay, that's fine. It's a little somber, and the left side of the frame doesn't have much in it, so let's add somebody. We've added Cole in there now. He's in his bow tie, he's kind of leaning forward, and I'm thinking, okay, all right, they're all looking at something out the window. I, I like that fine, but let's add somebody else back there because we had model Shannon there, Cole's friend Shannon. So there she is. And still the left side of that frame doesn't have enough weight. And they, okay, Shannon, stand up, touch him, look, look like you're very sorrowful, and look down at him. It's a very somber picture. And that's fine. That, to me, that's about the most I can do with that room. It's not, it's not the picture, though. It's not the ultimate picture that tells the story of the opulence of that house. So we moved out of that room. I love the light. I love the floor in there, the opulence. Can we go out to the, the main corridor using doorways as framing devices. And I started out vertically because we had vertical stripes in this chair and vertical stripes in the wallpaper. There's little Spencer there. He's the boss of the family, evidently. And I, I started out vertically and I thought, no, nah, that just doesn't cut it. I was really intent on using that doorway to frame things up. So I got a little closer. I barely maintained the doorway as the first framing device. And I had him kind of put his fingers there and just goof around with a little bit. And that kind of works. Not enough depth of field to carry me all the way through, but I like the way Cole stands out at that, that height. Tried horizontal. I'm a huge horizontal photography fan. I like horizontals a lot more than verticals. I'm thinking, well, okay, we've got portraits on the left, old time portraits on the wall there. They kind of tie the extra faces to hold the scene through. Maybe, maybe what else though? What else? Maybe move a little bit, shift Spencer in this elaborate gold chair. That really fits the scene a little bit better. This is an opulent home. That chair is a lot better. Plus, it's got a little bit of reflectivity. It's shimmering a little bit. Move him off to the side. There's no real focal point with this picture. I'm all over the place. Let's bring Spencer up front and center again. Now we're talking. Okay, and I like that low angle. I like that a lot. Cole really stands out. The tall kid on the left. Now I've got a lot of depth of field. I'm seeing all the way to the guy in the back, Nick but Spencer's not much good. Now look at this. Look at the difference between these, two, between these two pictures here. Look at this, a little bit more around the corner and a little bit closer. There you go, now you're talking. This is, this is what we're talking about. Maybe that's a little better too. A little bit more focal length to compress, to compress things. Maybe that's the frame there. Everything's reading real well. I think it is. Lower and more focal length. Really compresses things. Put Spencer as the, as the high point of the shot, the key point of the shot. That's the frame there, I think. Would have been better if Spencer looked more sinister if he'd been looking down, but that rings the bell for that. And that does say the story of the house, but it's not really the picture I wanted. I wanted to find the picture to be out in the main room, the main room. So let's go over there. Oh look, poor Spencer, it's so hard being a model. I pay the kid an ice cream for Pete's sake, you know? All right, here we go. Find the picture, where are we? Here's the shot I think is the payoff for the main room, mainly because we've got the subjects in good light. We've got archways in the back of the room that really define that this is an opulent room, a room with three archways on one end. This is a big room, but they're very somber and they don't need to be somber because we found the picture, they should be happy like this. I've thrown Nick in there on the left-hand side just to give us a little bit more balance, make it look like more of a family. And that's fine, that's fine, but I get him to yell with me. I get him to get excited about it. There we go. Much better, a little bit of blue in this chair down at the bottom, kind of holds that corner together. We're a little dark back here. Not bad, not bad. He's got dark hair, we're going into darkness. We've got a little bit of gold curtain to hold that left-hand side. Every bit of the frame I want working for me. There's no slop in here. We've got time, we have models, we've got it on it. You know, we, we can do this, we can do this. I don't want to make excuses for why one portion of the frame isn't going to work for me. All of it's going to work. Plus there's a really good peak action moment. People are very excited. That's the keeper.
Okay, look, we all start out with a basic premise of what we want to get when we're talking about finding a picture. Especially if we've been to a place before. I'd been to that house before. And I knew that that big room was hard to photograph. I'd never really solved the problem, though, of finding the picture. What I wanted to say is this. We go into these situations with an agenda or a goal, and that's really important to have, or we'd get there and we'd just kind of not know where to start. I love having that type of a starting point or that target. But remember, most of the time, not once in a while, but most of the time, that target is a starting point. When you figure out, okay, I've captured this, look around and shoot a bunch more. I mean, that's truly the way to get, to go from good to great. Good is what your mind imagines. Great is often what reality gives you. You get there, you see something out of the side of your eye, and you go after that. And you work that, and it's a lot better than what you sat at home and thought up. So keep your eyes open wherever you go, and realize that the picture you think you're going after often isn't going to be the best result.